In the world of darkness, every human being has a single spark of potential. We humans come into the world with open eyes, and then we take our first breaths and begin to close those eyes and scream. Most people never open their eyes again after that, or when they do, they see only what they want to see, what they're told to see. But some people take that first breath and then wake up. That's the awakening, the thing that makes mages what they are. Hello, 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 and welcome to another lore video on Mage the Ascension. In the last video, we talked about how mages find paths to the other worlds, and in this video, we'll talk about how mages reach these places, so if you missed the second part, you can watch that here. Now that a mage has learned about the other worlds, discovered a path to travel, and decides to brave the journey, their first step is passing through the wall of reality itself stepping out or into the skin of the world, an imperfect shadow of deeper truth that mages call the penumbra. Now, in the first part, I discussed what mages call Vidar or Vidare, but just a quick reminder, it's an awakens perceptions, the way they perceive a greater reality such as the other worlds. So although the penumbra always feels surreal, the dominant impression a mage receives depends heavily on their point of view or Vidare. As a result, not only is it possible for a group of travelers to see a very different world when they hit the penumbra together, it's fairly common for them to do so. But no matter which Vidare a mage perceives, a visitor to the penumbra will have their senses paradoxically muted and amplified, and will see some version of a shadowy, mist-shrouded reflection of the earthly side of the gauntlet, the barrier surrounding material reality, keeping it separate from the penumbra and what mages have to pass through to reach the other worlds. I'm going to apologize here if I sound like I'm repeating myself from previous videos, but if it's not already clear, mage is a bit complicated with a lot of capital T terms, and I don't want anyone to get lost in the shuffle. If I'm still not being clear, please feel free to ask for clarification in the comments. So a mage will see the shadowy gauntlet, their interpretation of the Earth's reflection, but what does one see as they explore further into the penumbra? Well, one of the many things they may see is a domain, a glowing light that shines through all three layers of the penumbra and marks itself as a place of exceptional power. Domains, sometimes called glens, radiate tranquility and are places where quintessence, the raw material of reality, flows or gathers. Some domains, called blights, are not nearly so appealing. Instead, they reflect areas of deep corruption and poisoned energy. And just as domains illuminate an area with appropriate radiance, a blight emits a sort of anti-light, swallowing up everything within reach in shadow. During a mage's travels, as they attempt to perhaps journey forth into the other layers of the penumbra, which we will go into in future videos, they may catch glimpses of gleaming webs crawling with mathematical spiders, weaving a web of stasis. Supposedly, if the spiders ever succeed in weaving their web across the world, there won't be such things as magic or imagination anymore. Those of you who follow my Werewolf the Apocalypse lore videos will know exactly who's behind this. Speaking of werewolves, learning the secrets of these shape changers to whom this land is a second home would be the easiest way to travel to the realms of the penumbra. But since werewolves are rarely keen on sharing such things, it would behoove a traveler to be experienced in cosmology or be skilled at reading otherworldly signs. Even then, though, Finding ones through the penumbra and into an actual realm is tricky, since navigation is more a matter of instinct and intention than of direction, which is one of the many things about these travels that discourages mages from trying. Because these voyages are not an exact science, this is one of those areas where it's a good idea for a mage to listen to their avatar, that awakened spirit within that often understands this world better than the conscious mind does. The other worlds are often counter-academic, and human learning seems to get in the way. It's almost as if once an awakened passes beyond the gauntlet, they have to unlearn all the things that they have learned. That being said, members of the technocratic union who study dimensional science seem to have an easier time finding their bearings in the spirit world than other mages do. But that is likely due to what we've already discussed, expectations shaping reality. If one expects to know what they're doing, they've got a decent chance at doing it. Speaking of expectations, there are two final terms I want to discuss before ending this video, Tellurian and Tapestry. 
both are essentially metaphors for things that transcend words within cosmic concepts. Tellurian essentially means everything. It's reality with a capital R. Everything that has been imagined, can be imagined, or has yet to be imagined. It's a word for something that transcends words, an ineffable name of God or infinity. It's something beyond definition, and to name it would be to limit it and thus to insult it. It's potential that cannot be grasped except through metaphor. So when a mage says Tellurian, they're literally saying everything. Where Tellurian is the potential, tapestry is the form. Infinity is too big to wrap one's head around, therefore it needs a face, and tapestry is that face. All woven together like some artistic curtain, the strands of interconnected existence create a shimmering whole. If a mage wants to truly understand the magical realm, much less the other worlds, it helps a lot if they can wrap their heads around the idea of metaphors that reveal a deeper truth. In the next Mage the Ascension lore video, we'll discuss the first layer or realm of the three umbrae, the astral or high umbra. I make World of Darkness lore videos multiple times a week, so if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. Now remember, Awakened Ones, reality is what you make of it.